Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining. I had visions when I saw I was first on on day three of speaking to an empty room. So thanks for being here. Um, so my name is Fran Huron. I head up the network virtualization strategy and architecture for, uh, for Vodafone Group. Um, and today I want to talk about, and I, I sat down to, to think through what I would talk about uh, in, in this session. And being day three, you know, it's quite likely that most of you have seen every combination of, of technical and architecture presentation there is. So I wanted to change the, the focus, make it a little bit more personal, uh, reflect a little bit on the industry. I'm actually quite new to Vodafone. I joined three months ago, but I've spent most of my career in telecoms on the vendor side um, and actually began working in this area of virtualization um, from the start. So going back five, six years in moving what we would call legacy or traditional infrastructure and components into virtual and onto the cloud. So I wanted to reflect today and I wanted to pick a topic which was, you know, a lot of the discussions you'll have heard this week are of a technical nature. And if we look at the challenges that we're facing and the, the obstacles we need to overcome, for sure there is and probably always will be you know, technical challenges that we have to address. But I think it's fair to say we have a reasonably good handle on what they are in the near term. Um, what's becoming increasingly obvious is the non-technical challenges. So as we mature the technology, the focus is shifting to what I call the biology of, of this industry transformation. So the theme of my talk is, is technology versus biology, what the balance is. And uh, I wanted to start by, by taking it through, if this will move. We have, a, there we go. By taking it through a, a crude, but I think effective um, reflection or representation of how we in this industry are getting to to the cloud. So I mentioned I was involved on the vendor side in, in beginning to move you know, systems that have been around for a long time. We, know we are all in business in the telecoms industry for, for several decades. Um, so we have very established systems, very proven systems, very reliable systems, but all rooted in the physical world. So we've begun this journey to the cloud. And sometimes when I talk to some of the, the cloud native companies, the web scale companies, they're perplexed at the challenges that we face because they obviously started much later and were cloud native from day one. So I, I picked, I think there's five stages. It might be a little bit crude, but it also happens to match the, the classic evolution of man diagram, so it fits quite nicely. Uh, and we all started back probably five, six years ago by doing basic virtualization. And actually, I would argue that the term virtualization is, has probably run its course. We're not just doing virtualization. We are taking our networks and our services into the cloud. So the use of virtualization in many ways can be an obstacle to achieving that final goal. But we started here, we, we took these services, we virtualized almost as a proof point, but they were still running in silos. And, and I'll talk more about silos and, and the importance of breaking them down um, going forward. Um, and the designs of those systems, certainly the ones that have been around for some time, stayed the same, right? So it was almost a, a scientific proof point versus a, a practical application. But it was an important first step. Then we moved to what I would call basic cloud, where we've begun to introduce levels of automation that we didn't have before. Um, I would argue that we didn't probably need to begin the cloud journey to do the automation, but it was a, an obvious necessity as we move into an automated, much more elastic environment, we needed to take these systems and remove um, almost completely over time any of the manual processes that we had and have had for, for some time, but again, it sat in silos, ran independently. You know, we were still early on on this journey. And then we moved to what I would call a more advanced cloud. The automation improved. And this is where I think, and this might be controversial, some of you may disagree. This is where I think we as an industry are, and I say we, both the service providers and also the vendors, in terms of we know what cloud looks like, but in terms of actual execution to get there, um, the, the silo breakdown is the next big hurdle we have to overcome, right? So we have, I think, reasonably good, uh, in some cases rewritten, in some cases re-architected software systems um, that understand the cloud, that work in the cloud. And this is where I think we have the switch from technology to the biological factors that I'll talk about. It's still largely a siloed ecosystem, right? These components are kept apart because that's how we've done this in the industry for, for, for many, many years. And we're transitioning now to what I would call 
cloud ready and then fully cloud native. I'm sure you've heard about that this week. But the difference being we're going to break down those silos. And I want to kind of take that as the theme moving forward and moving from the vertical to the horizontal and what that means for all of us in the industry and especially the vendor community. For some reason, this isn't working. So if somebody can advance my slide. There we go. So before I do that, I wanted to do, and this is a bit of an eye chart, I apologize. I wanted to do a quick uh, overview. Uh, at Vodafone, we started about three years ago on our journey to cloud and taking our networks and our software um, into the cloud. Um, we have a program called Project Ocean, which is, I guess, a constantly evolving, and we have our architecture diagram there. And I didn't, you know, the intent in showing this is not to read all the individual boxes. But it's to show, and you know, as we move to cloud, obviously the architecture will evolve and will continue to, to evolve as our technology advances. The key is the horizontal design and the horizontal nature. So from our transport network up to our customer experience and everything in between, we are rebuilding our networks and our applications to be much more horizontal, um, much more componentized with clear ideally standards-based interfaces between each of these layers. Uh, and this is an important topic because one of the things that will happen is a separation. And I'll talk later about business models and how business models need to evolve, but we are separating things that were up until relatively recently quite tied together and quite joined up. And that's not just technology, but also business models as well. Um, but from a top to bottom perspective, um, I think the key here is it's a unified environment. So it'll, it'll come back to that theme of silos. And it's a unified ecosystem into which all of our software and services, both network and IT, will exist, which for some, and some of us in this room, is quite a fundamental change from where we were before. I'm always a little bit embarrassed showing this slide, and I, I, do, I always apologize. But actually, it's amazing the number of times that it's, it's, it needs to be explained to different groups in, in different parts of the industry. Um, and this is what I was talking about in terms of the silos. We are putting in place a common infrastructure. We are building a carrier cloud, like the other carriers are doing, into which we are putting our software functions. And there's a decoupling happening between both the hardware and the software. So to the best extent possible, and one of the things we're looking at in Vodafone is the classic discussion of how different is network from IT which you may have heard before. So for the longest time, the network was considered to be super special. It was quite different to IT. We had specialized hardware, very specialized software. As the technology has advanced, we see a convergence of both, especially in terms of the infrastructure. So in building a cloud, we're looking to build a common infrastructure, common architecture for both our core all the way out to the edge, into which we can place various workloads of both a network and or an IT nature, and provide the virtualized compute resources available to those that's needed. And there are, in terms of network, obviously, some specialized functions in terms of packet throughput, media processing, and so on, but not to allow specialization down below the cloud into the hardware level. So what I thought I'd do is, and I picked five of each category, is look at, from a Vodafone perspective, what are, are our next challenges, right? And I'll start with the technology challenges. Um, and I've, I've picked five. There's obviously more. But as we mature up that stack that I showed earlier, a lot of the, the fundamental technology problems have been solved. We understand what it means and, and requires to put these network functions into a cloud environment. Um, but there are some things that are still I think, to be solved in conjunction with our partners and the vendor community. Uh, service assurance is an obvious one. Um, as the environment gets more, shall we say, multicultural, so we have more components from more individuals providing or making up a single service, assuring that service availability, if something does go wrong, understanding where it's gone wrong, why, and who you call, has become an increasingly more complex problem. Again, in moving away from the vertical silo to the horizontal, it's inevitable. And I think it's one of the challenges that we are actively working on. But as an industry, there's more work we need to do to understand how this will work. And not just from a technology point of view, I'll talk about SLAs on the next slide as well, in terms of how all these partners play together to offer a single service. The other area we're looking at is service lifecycle management. So my colleague Matt was on stage yesterday here 
and he talked about customer expectations evolving, right? So customers order a new service, they want the service immediately, right? They want instant gratification, they're not going to wait two hours or two days or two weeks. So our traditional service order management systems need to be um, enhanced, especially in a world of automation and elasticity, and understanding how that will plug into the lower layers through orchestration and other components is something that I think as an industry and a vendor community, we are still working through. But again, it's a, I think it's, it's a positive sign in that it's, it's progress up the technology stack, so to speak, but it's, a, it's something that we're looking at. License management, not spoken about that frequently, but I think it's becoming increasingly important. Again, in a cloud world where we have dozens of vendor components, which are highly automated now, right? So we're taking away the manual processes and intervention, making sure that we are compliant with licenses. As these software systems scale and grow and move, um, we are fundamentally changing how license management across the entire ecosystem needs to work. That's something that needs to be progressed further. And I would say to the vendors in the room, it's certainly an opportunity as I talk about old business models shutting down and new ones starting up, this along with service assurance are two obvious areas where there is a need in the industry to get more mature. Standards, I'll talk about a little bit later. And then finally, operational tools. And this is something that is still definitely a work in progress. Again, think about how we used to run our networks in the past. Very siloed, very vertical. People had a top to bottom view from the software down to the hardware for a particular function. Now we're disaggregating those layers. Infrastructure is separate to application. We have automation, we have orchestration. It's a fundamentally different paradigm for operations. And that's not just technology, but also people as well. So that's kind of our technology focus at the moment. Um, but I wanted to talk about the, the, the biological or the philosophical areas that I see becoming increasingly more important and increasingly more of a barrier as we collectively move to the cloud. First is business models. I think pretty fundamental example, I spoke about the disaggregation of hardware and software. For a long time, you know, vendors would package the hardware, the software, the services together, and it worked. And we were able to move you know, pricing and margin between them to make deals viable and make deals work. Uh, in a horizontal world, we are going to split that, right? The infrastructure is the infrastructure, the software is the software, the bundling and the, the selling of vertical silos won't work anymore. So there are some fundamental questions for the community to understand is how do I evolve my business fast enough? How do I shed the old business models, the old revenue streams, and make way for the new? And it's hard, right? It's hard for companies to do that when you have shareholder expectations and so on, but it is becoming more and more fundamental that this is needed. The good news is there are other business opportunities emerging, right? I spoke about some on the previous slide, but I would say to the, the audience that uh, we need to move faster in this area. We can't just wait until the revenue finally dies and then try to find a new area. There's a crossover, there's a, a, a change needed. Um, so that's gonna be key. Um, think short-term versus, sorry, think long-term versus short-term. And this one is on us, right? This is for the operators in the room, the carriers. We will never truly realize the cloud vision if we think about things in terms of a single service, right? You think about what we're doing, we are creating this horizontal infrastructure, this shared environment for all of our services. Sometimes we can find that it's very easy or more comfortable to focus on just what's in front of you versus think about what things will look like and need to look like in the next two, three, four, five years. So as an industry, to be truly effective in executing and for Vodafone executing on ocean, we need to think about the long term the savings that we will get, the enhancements we will get through automation, through better use of the infrastructure, it's all about long-term thinking. Automation, I just mentioned it. Um, there's a technology aspect to it, for sure, and you've heard all about orchestration and other tools. It's also a people um, discussion. Automation means that there are tasks that people are working on today in our environments that will be replaced with automated processes. We have to confront that organizationally from a people point of view. There are other areas emerging that I think will more than compensate for those tasks being automated. I mentioned service assurance on the previous slide. Um, so there's, again, like the business model discussion, there are new opportunities emerging, new challenges that businesses can, can seize 
if we confront and address what is actually happening with what we're doing. Um, so automation is key. SLAs, um, and I spoke about this earlier this week, um, our service level agreements somewhat tied to service assurance. I would say to the vendors in the room that uh, you know, we've been used to working relatively siloed, relatively self-contained for, for, for the last few decades. Inevitably, as we have a shared environment, we are going to have to come together more than we currently are. And I still see, understandably probably, a reluctance across the industry to embrace competitors, but it will be necessary for us to actually build this vision, this infrastructure. Your systems will have to work together, probably closer together than they ever did before. And that may be uncomfortable, but we need to find a way to make that work. We obviously can play a role in helping to make that happen, but we need to understand exactly how collaboration will work, how our service level agreements will work in the future, and you know, the comfort level where you're not completely in charge of the entire vertical stack, still being able to offer a sensible SLA to your customer. I think it's a problem we haven't cracked yet across the industry, and certainly in Vodafone we're looking at it, but also we're open to, uh, open to input from the community on this. So they're the kind of biological challenges that I see, and I do see them becoming more of a barrier to progress, right? The technology we've got a reasonably good handle on, we have more work to do for sure. You know, I showed you the, the sort of five steps, there's still some way to go, but we can see how to get there. Uh, increasingly, it's becoming more of a people challenge or a philosophical challenge. And the message for me today is think about that, think about how it impacts people, how our business models need to evolve, and how we need to work better with not just our partners, but also people who are today our competitors. Finally, I'll say on uh, open standards, um, obviously they're important. The industry was built on standards. Uh, one of the things that we're seeing as we go up through that notional stack, especially in the areas of automation, there's still obviously a, a significant need for standards. As more of these components need to work together, we're lacking in that area. So initiatives such as ONAP, for example, which Vodafone is a member of, is important. But ONAP is just one of many, and you can see on the slide, uh, you know, at every layer in that, that block diagram I showed you earlier, we are looking to have standard open interfaces, open APIs. Uh, you know, we see in the vendor community especially, even with open source, what we do see happening sometimes is a vendor will take an open source component and then customize it. For good reason sometimes, right? They, they enhance, they, they add their own elements to it. But it poses a challenge because it, it then represents a proprietary non-open, right? So from what was open source is now somehow Vodafone specific or vendor specific. It's something we're working very hard on Vodafone um, to eliminate. And certainly as we deploy the new components inside Ocean, we are very strict about the use of open interfaces, open standards. If a vendor feels that strongly about an enhancement, the message from us is feed it back in through the open source community. Then we can use it. So all the way through that layer, Interoperability, standards-based openness is, is very, very key, and we're obviously heavily involved in those standards that impact us. So finally, I will conclude. Uh, technology versus biology. I think uh, I certainly wouldn't want to underplay our technical challenges, but I did want to highlight today, and hopefully it was interesting, some of the people challenges that we're facing, and to not ignore one over the other. Uh, we have our work to do, right? This is not a, you know, on both sides of the community, shall we say. As carriers, we need to think more long-term, and we also can help, not just in standards, but in bringing you all together into this new cloud ecosystem, which is a fundamentally different way of working. Thank you.